Hi folks. When we get into our project, we're going to shortly be working with a lot of data. There's going to be a lot of images, but there's going to be a lot of plain text files too, just combinations of numbers, lists of numbers. The simplest way of transmitting information like that in astronomy is in a plain text file. There's lots of different ways that you can transmit a collection of numbers. Sometimes people use something called a FITS binary table. Sometimes they're binary things within programs. But the, the simplest way to do it is a plain text file. And you'll find plain text files throughout astronomy. So for example, in this case, I've done a search for a particular catalog within Simbad. If I go to the actual catalog, they provide me tools for manipulating the catalog, but if I want to manipulate it myself, I might actually go and get the original file myself. Here it tells you exactly what the file is, where the data come from, what data are included, background information and caveats, and then a detailed explanation of what column is what. This is telling you exactly what the plain text file is. When we get to our stuff, because you're working with me, and because I work at IPAC, and because I'm using software that was developed at IPAC, I have a tendency to use something called IPAC table format. And that is just another kind of plain text file. When you get to this step of the process, the working with the data table step, this is the part where you're going to need to know how to work with IPAC table format files. Here is the big picture goal, understand how to work with the tables, but in order to do that, you need to actually learn how to work with the table and manipulate it in Excel. So let's look at what one of these table format files are. When you go and copy that file to your desktop, you're going to see something that looks like this. It's going to have some kind of uh, file name that I'm going to give it that hopefully will be self-explanatory, like in this case this contains probably just a list of the YSOs, and it ends in a .tbl format. This may seem initially confusing and intimidating because your computer doesn't understand what that is. Look at that icon. It's empty because the computer doesn't understand exactly what a .tbl format file is. There's a couple different ways that you can get access to just see exactly what that file is. The simplest way to do it is to go to a terminal window and actually type more on the file. Now this shows you the first couple of lines of the file. Here there's a first couple of comments. Look, band merge B to MIPS 24 catalog for just YSOs. It was produced on Thursday, October 28, 2010 by me and there are 30 sources in the file and minus 9 means no data available. That's kind of the minimum bit of information you need to know the history, the provenance of this file. Now it becomes really kind of confusing there's a whole bunch of things here and what's really going on is that this is a very long line and it's wrapping on my screen. It's wrapping around so it's not showing me one it, it is one showing me one line but it's wrapping funny around the screen. So let's think of a different way to access that information content. I can take it and I can drag and drop it on top of a text editor. Then I can change the window size and if I make it big enough then I can stretch it out and you can see those lines change wrapping depending on how big my window is. So if I give you a table that an IPAC table file that doesn't have too many columns you could access it this way. You could just make a very long window and access the information. So you can start to see there's some recognizable things. There's a name, there's right ascension and declination, there's another kind of name and now we start to get into magnitudes at the optical, and we have some more magnitudes and fluxes. So there's lots of good stuff in here, but this is still probably not the way that you want to ac access this information. Maybe, for example, you don't have text edit. How can you convince your computer that this is really a text file? You can get in here and you can change the file name. Add a .txt. It's going to tell you, oh, you really want to do this. Yes, I really want to do this. Now it's a text file. Now in order to access it, all I have to do is double click on it and it opens the file. If you don't believe me, let's do it again. See? It's opening it as a plain text file. So you can do any one of those things in order to import the to, in order to get access to the data. But one the, the way that you actually really want to access this is I mean at the end of the day you can write code in any language to parse a plain text file. And that's why plain text files are so common in astronomy is because it doesn't matter what computer language you're using, you can write 
anything that can parse a plain text file. But I'm assuming that you guys probably don't want to get into coding. So in order to do this, we need to find another way for you to get access to the numbers in this table in a way that will enable you to actually manipulate them, to calculate things, and to make plots. The only way that I know of that's most easy for you to do that is to do it in Excel. So in order to do this, we need to teach Excel how to read this file. Um, so that I can demonstrate for you this process from the beginning. Let me remove that .txt extension. Yes, we want to use .tbl. Okay, so now from within Excel, we want to open. Now, if you yourself have left that .txt extension, it will automatically show up as a readable file. What we want to enforce with Excel here is that, yes, I really want to see all files and then select that TBL file and then open it. It's going to go parse, start to parse it. It's going to look at it and it's going to try to figure out exactly what is in here. So some of you may have gotten to the screen before and just automatically click finish and gone on. If you do that, it's not going to parse it properly. Well, maybe it will. No, it won't. So it's got all sorts of funny values in here. It doesn't have the columns lined up. Um, maybe it did. Maybe I got lucky. In the generic case, it's not going to do it. Oh, here we go. For example, it's put the right ascension and declination in the same column. That's not ideal because you'd like to be able to plot the right ascension and declination. And in, in my experience, frequently what will happen is it will parse it wrong. You'll end up with two numbers in some columns and no numbers in others. So that's really not going to work in general. So let's not just quit. Let's not just accept the defaults. We have to actually teach it how to read this file. So if we go to open, we are definitely, we not we don't have a delimited file. We definitely have a fixed width file. So let's go on to the next. Now it's going to show you exactly where the barriers are between the columns that it's importing. What you want to do is you want to click and drag those lines over so that they're exactly to the right of those pipes in the input file. If there's nothing to drag, just click and a new one will appear. So click and drag that one. Let's drag this one over. Let's drag this one over and just keep going through the whole file until you get, until you teach Excel exactly where the boundaries are between columns and exactly what it is that you want it to import. You can, for example, tell it, oh look, I don't want to import the first 20 lines or I only want to import, I want to import all of it or just part of it. But if you have an extra one like this, double click on the top to get rid of it. Basically, this step is tedious, but it's the only way that I know of to teach Excel how to import this. Now, in practice, you'll, I guarantee you that you're going to end up doing this more than once. So just get used to the concept that you're going to have to do this more than once, even though there are a lot of columns in the files I'm going to give you. And so, yeah, it is going to be tedious, but chances are pretty good that you're going to have to do this more than once. Just kind of get used to that concept now. Let me see if we're making progress through the file here. Whoops. There's one. Let's see, there should be one there. Let's keep going. Get rid of that one. Drag that one over. Drag that one over. Get rid of that one. Get rid of that one. Drag that one over. Drag that one over. We're getting to the end. Get rid of this one. We're getting there. Because we're at MIPS 1, so there can't be too many more columns. Oops, did I do that right? No, I had that one off a little. Let's get rid of that one. Okay, so now we can click Next. And if you really want to individually format each one of these columns, you can, but in general, it does okay by default on that. So then you click Finish, and then it's imported the entire file in with the headers aligned properly, with all of the values in the individual columns properly. Now, it's kind of borked up the headers, but that's okay, because you can still read them. The important part is that you've got the data in there properly. So now you can actually go and manipulate things. You can start calculating fluxes from magnitudes, magnitudes of fluxes, plot things up as right ascension and declination, plot up SEDs, 
then you're good to go.